Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Hello, viewers. I welcome you this day the 12th day of December in the year of our Lord, 2019. Come together and let us take the bread of our life before we step out to our businesses this morning. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, I want to thank you for this early morning devotion. Bless us through your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Beloved, let's go straight to the scripture. 1 John chapter 2, I read from verse 1. 1 John chapter 2, I read from verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for us only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know, that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that said, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that said, He abided in him, all to save also to walk, even as he walked. Brethren, Write no new commandments unto you, but an old commandments which you had from the beginning. The old commandments is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which things is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that said is in the light, and hath and hated his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Verse 11. But he that hated his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus. Amen. This morning we are going to look at the topic, knowing God. Knowing God. Knowing God. That's a very interesting topic. I want to start by saying that knowledge is the ability to know. In the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6, God lamented so much and said, My people are destroyed because of what? Lack of knowledge. Inasmuch as these people carry the label as God's people, chosen people, selected people, but yet they do not understand whom this God is. They say knowledge is power. Information is power. If you are not informed, you'll be deformed. And so the scripture is giving us where we read in this 1 John chapter 2, our brother John is drawing our attention to what we ought to know since we are being addressed and called Christians. And so, shame and calamity abides in the house and the life of the man who is ignorant and not even mindful of knowing this God. God wants us to know him. God is our Father. God is our life. God is everything to us. He wants us to have a closer relationship with Him. But we have to start with knowing Him. And until you decide to come to the point of willing to know, you will not know. Two or three things I discover from the place we read. Number one. John the Beloved is admonishing the brethren, the Christian, not to sin. 
And that even if we sin, there is an escape way, but it's not a guarantee. Number two, that we must have the knowledge of God by doing the will of God. And number three, we ought to live the Christian life through the knowledge of God which we have known. Now, he said that we should not sin. Sin interrupts divine activities in the life of every Christian man and woman. Sin builds a barrier that cannot be crossed. When we read the book of Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1, he said, The hand of God is not short that it cannot deliver. Nor the ears of God close or short they cannot hear. But he said, why is it that it is like the hand of God is short or the ears of God is short? He said, our sin has raised a barrier. Meaning that as long as Christian man or Christian woman, regardless of his position or title in the church, continue to live in sin, the obvious fact is that there will be a wall of demarcation. It doesn't matter how much cry we cry. Until we decide to walk away from sin, the wall of demarcation between our freedom, between our joy and peace will remain there. And that was the reason why Jesus Christ came. John is admonishing us this morning that we should not live in sin. But in case a Christian man, because we live in this world, in case there is that mistake of falling into sin, he said there is hope. That hope is found only in who? Jesus. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. Number one, he said, the wages of sin is dead. Can we see the danger of death? But the gift of God is eternal life. The wages of sin. Which means that Everything we do that contradicts the will and command of God has a payday. Everything we do that speaks against the ordinances of Jehovah, there is a reward. The wages of sin is dead. But the joyful aspect of it is that he said the gift of God is the eternal life through Jesus Christ. This is the escape way. That means that God never wants any man to perish. It is the mind, it is the plan of God that all men should come to the knowledge of repentance. And that was the reason why Jesus Christ came. To save from, from eternal penalty of sin. And that is the reason why today we are talking about heaven. Beloved, let me ask you this question. Have you given your life to Jesus? Have you considered the consequences of being stubborn to the world of life, knocking at your door for your salvation? Have you considered the consequences of neglecting the salvation knocking at the door of your heart? A time shall come when you shall be no more. And when you close your eyes in death, the reality of eternity begins. The chance is now. It is when Jesus is evident in your life, you will not be given the grace, the grace to discern which is which, he said in John chapter 1 verse 12, But as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe it on his name. Is there no time you give your life to Jesus so that the power to live a life that will attract the glory of God, the presence of God, will now be resident in your life. That is when the Spirit of God is resident in your life, when Jesus is in your life, then you have the grace to do His will. Because the third aspect of it is that knowing, the, having the knowledge of God, having the knowledge of God has to do with the Spirit of God in a man. You know, God is a spirit, and those that worship God must have the Spirit of God. You must possess God because before you begin to understand the rudiments of heaven, when Jesus is evident in your life, you will understand what it means to obey God. 
you understand what the word of God is talking about, do this and don't do this. When the word of God is preached, you will know that God is talking to you from the very passage you are reading. He said, a new a, a commandment are given to you, not a new one, but it's a reminder of the same commandment. Be obedient to the rudiments of God. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 19, Isaiah said, If you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the best of the land. People of God. I want to assure you that obedience to God's command gives birth to blessings. Obedient to God's rules will make you to become the choice of God. No man that obeys his father or mother that will not receive something special from, from their parents. How much more when you are obedient to a heavenly father, God will do more than what you expected. If you're obedient and willing, the best of the land you will eat. Obedient takes one to a higher level. When you are willing to obey, God will make you his choice. When Joshua was about to embark on the journey after the death of Moses, God gave him authority and said, As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. But one thing is certain, the word of life in your hand, you must be careful to observe. He's talking about obedience. Observe everything written in it by so doing. You will make your way prosperous and you'll be successful. Meaning that our success in life, our progress and whatever we're doing or become lies in our readiness to submit to divine authority. Hallelujah. It is my earnest prayer that God will give you the grace to be obedient to the command of God, to live a life that glorifies God. And that brings us to the last point, living out the life of God. Excuse me. You cannot demonstrate or display or showcase Christ without being part of him. Life of Christ must flow in you. And that is where you will now be able to attract people to God. Jesus in his war sermon on the mountain in Matthew chapter 5 verse 16, he said, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good work and glorify your Father which is in heaven. It means that the life you live must correspond, correspond with the word of God we preach. I want to say this, that preachings are so much today, but what is so much lacking in the Christian community is the life we live. I want to believe that our character disposition has the power to draw people to Christ than the word declaration of our mouth. We preach much, but living the life of the word of God we preach becomes a difficult thing to practice. And that's why Jesus said, let your life so shine. Live the life of Christ. The life of brotherly love. The life of joy. The life of peace. The life of holiness and righteousness. The life that will be the life that will take us to heaven. Now, let me ask you this. Who is Jesus to you? Remember the topic, knowing God. A time came in the book of Matthew chapter 16. From verse 13, Jesus said, Who do men say that I am? He asked the disciples, Who do men say that I am? And I said, well, some say you are Elijah, some say you are this, some say you are that, some say you are one of the prophets that was dead and resurrected. He said, you who are born with me, whom do you say that I am? That was a very difficult question. Beloved, do you know that not minding the year that I spent with Jesus, some of them are still not sure who Christ is. That means they still lack the knowledge of who is this man until revelation comes from heaven. And Peter said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. It is my earnest prayer this morning that the revelation of Christ, a new revelation of whom God is, will be made known to you. In the book of Daniel chapter 11 verse 33 said, they that know their God shall do exploits. It is my earnest prayer that the knowledge of God 
shall be made known to you, so that you will be part of those that have been ruled in the arm of the Lord, shall we pray. Everlasting Father, I want to thank you for the entrance of your word into our heart this morning. Help us, O oh God, to be doers of your word. Make us members of your kingdom as the knowledge is made known to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.